everybody. So I went out and bought myself a Roland GK3B divided pickup for the bass and installed it on my Ibanez five string bass. So I thought I'd do a quick little overview of how that went um, in case you want to do it or have questions yourself. Um, so the first thing I did was I needed to change my strings anyway so I installed new strings. Um, these are Ernie Ball um, bass strings, of course. Um, and one of the first things in the, uh, the pickup manual that'll have you do is you need to determine the string to string spacing. You can either measure it, um, which I did initially. So I have some digital calipers and I just measured um, the distance from string to string with those came out roughly about 16 millimeters, give or take. Um, and then I noticed um, they've got a handy dandy gauge on the package insert for the pickup um, with four different uh, string spacing options on there and markings. And like the manual tells you, all you gotta do is slide it under the strings and line it up till it matches your particular um, base. And bingo, it confirms. That, yep, I was right. My calipers are in calibration and um, my strings are 16 millimeters apart. Um, actually, the whole install, uh, there, it comes with a manual, an owner's manual, and uh, you can look through there. They have upside down pages and other languages. Um, it's actually a whole lot easier than it looks in the, in the owner's manual. Um, anyway, after changing the strings, um, well, by the way, the reason I wanted to even do this was I've been happy with my bass being a non-GK, uh, non-synthesized accessible bass up till now, but um, playing Thriller, the bass part for Michael Jackson's Thriller um, in the group I play for coming up, and uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to... Um, be able to come up with the bass sound similar to the synth bass sound in the, the Jackson recording, um, which was kind of tough to do with what I had. And I looked around um, for some other options, and there's pedals out there you can get, and Moog actually. Um, oh, yeah, and so after doing some research from what I have read, um, the bass part in Michael Jackson's Thriller was done on a Moog Mini Moog. Synth synthesizer. Um, so I don't have one of those and um, I looked around at some bass pedals that are out there and um, I realized hey I already have a Roland GR55 which I use with my guitars um, so why not just see what I can do with that. So I went out and got the, uh, the pickup and I think it was 179, 189. I forget the exact price, but it's pretty close to buying a, a standalone guitar pedal, you know. Um, so I got that and went about installing it. And I didn't really didn't want to drill any holes in my bass because it's a really beautiful bass. I like it a lot, and um, I thought it'd be a good idea to make this so I can remove it and move it to a different instrument later if I decide I want to do that. So I went with the tape-on option, and uh, it's really not too hard. They give you um, pretty good instructions in the, the user guide. Um, so one of the first things you want to do is make sure your base is clean. You don't have any grime or oil or dust on it when you go to uh, install the tape. Because if you're sorry do. about the little glitch in the video, my camera turned off on me automatically there. Anyway, um, if you need new strings, now would be a good time to replace your strings before you install the pickup. Um, and mine needed new strings, so I went got some new strings, uh, Ernie Ball um, slinkies for the bass, and put those on. Um, one of the first things you'll see in the manual that you need to do is to determine the string spacing, the string to string spacing in millimeters. You can either measure that like I did with calipers or they provide you a nice little um, gauge 
on the um, the insert for the package with uh, options for different string spacings. And the way you use that is just slide it under your strings and then line it up until um, each line goes right under your strings. And on mine it's 16 millimeters, which confirms what I measured with the calipers manually. And the reason you need to do that is you probably can't see it from here, but there's a diagram uh, that I put on the web page on my website for this video that shows you the side of the pickup. There's, um, I forget which page it is in here. Oh yeah, it's uh, page eight in the manual. I don't know if you can see this, but there are little screws on the side of the pickup that you need to loosen and there's a little itty bitty screwdriver in the installation kit that you use for that. So you loosen those and then you slide the, um, there's a little post there that you can grab with your fingernails um, or your fingertips and slide so that it falls under whatever string spacing your base is. In my case it's 16. Slide those over till it lines up and then tighten it back down takes a little bit of coordination, um, <laughs> but you got to be careful that you don't bend the thing or don't over tighten the screws. So you get that set and uh, that's one of the main things you need to do. Um, so after you have the, the strings changed and uh, adjusted the pickup um, spacing, um, you're going to work on attaching the pickup. So the first thing you need to do is figure out where, what location you want to put the pickup. The cable needs to come out from the bottom of the pickup, so it needs to face the bridge. Don't put it up here by the pickup. It needs to be this way, going down. And um, the limit, according to the manual, is the pickup, the rolling pickup, can be no more than 50 millimeters from the bridge which is 50 millimeters is about two inches. Um, and as you can see, mine is within that. And that's as close as I could get it because of just the design of the bridge and everything. So once you know where you want the pickup to go, you need to mark it because you're gonna take this off. Uh, mark it somehow. I just used some, a couple pieces of tape to show the outline of exactly where it was gonna go. And, um, oh yeah. On mine, on a five string base, there's a line. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little indentation, a vertical line across the pickup. That needs to be, on this base anyway, anyway between the uh, second and third strings. So between the, uh, the D and the A string, right in the middle. And so you get that set and you mark the location. Once you've done that, um, tune up the strings, your new strings, if you put them on to your normal tuning, and then you need to adjust the height of the pickup. And there's all these different shims and spacers in this bag of with the installation kit, so you just use whatever ones are appropriate to wedge under the pickup so that um, it's about one and a half millimeters from the, each string. And there's a little gauge that they give you to do that. It's a little l shape piece of metal. It's a 1.5 millimeter gauge and you use that to slide under um, each string as you're adjusting. And they, they tell you to when you measure it to hold down the string at the, the last fret and then take your measurement and then adjust the shims accordingly. So once you've got that kind of figured out um, you're going to take the strings off. I didn't take them all the way off. I just loosened them and pulled them over to the side, draped them down. Um, and then you're going to attach everything uh, once you've figured out the proper number of shims that you need to use. So uh, there's tape, double-sided tape, backing tape in the bag. Um, so you take that and you're going to apply it between the pickup and however many shims or pads that you had to use. And so uh, when you put everything back down in the exact location that you marked, you want to press real firmly 
make sure it sticks really good. Oh yeah, and by the way, before you put the uh, tape the thing down, make sure the area is real clean under there. Just use um, uh, something to clean it. You don't want to damage the finish, but you don't want any uh, oil residue or dust or anything to be under there. So you want to get a good um, uh, adherence of the tape. Um, and once you've got that put on, just uh, restring the base and tune it back up. And then double check your height and adjust each, uh, each string up or down if you need to. So they're all one and a half millimeters apart. By the way, I added this foam underneath the strings to cut down. A lot of people recommend some foam to uh, cut down on uh, extraneous harmonics that tend to cause glitches and ghost notes and weird things that you don't want to happen um, when you're playing through the GR55. And then finally, the last thing is to attach the controller, the wart. <laughs> um, initially I had it this on the back side so that the only thing showing up here was this one little metal piece, that little guy there. So I was trying to avoid having a big black glob stuck in the front of my base. That didn't work out too well because when it's mounted down here, it bumps on your leg, your waist, and um, as you can see, there's switches and the, the volume knob and, and the uh, selection switch here. And uh, it's a real pain when you're playing and you bump that and your volume drops out or you change patches accidentally. It's not a good thing. Um, so I've flipped it around and put it on the top here. I'll see how that works the next time I play it. Um, they give you an option to uh, install it on top of the bridge with this extra bracket that's in the kit. I haven't done that. I really don't want to do that because then it would be way up here and it's probably going to change the sound of the instrument even more. Um, I don't know. I just didn't like that option. So that's where I'm at now. And, um, oh yeah, so the last thing you need to do is attach the... Uh, they give you a short little patch cable, a quarter inch guitar cable that goes from here on the controller over to your input or output, I guess, to be technically correct, um, your normal quarter inch output right there. That way um, you can send both the signals both from the, the GK pickup and your normal bass pickups all through the 13 pin cable that comes attaches right here and it goes to your GR55 or whatever uh, synth unit you're connecting to. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I hope this might be helpful to you. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave a reply on the web page below and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye-bye.